Hello and welcome to the Philippines. Uh, this is cost of living in the Philippines. You can live any lifestyle you want here, a very, a very high end, or uh, you can live uh, in the province, more Filipino style, and uh, with lower rent, lower food costs. This is a four month average, uh, January, February, March, and April, and kind of a strange four month average. Uh, because uh, starting in about March, uh, we went into a, a bit of a quarantine type situation with a lot of the stores closed, taxis, transportation shut down. And uh, I did take one trip, I think in January, and I will include a little bit of the cost for that as well a little later. My rent is 20,000 pesos a month, and I'm using 50 pesos to the U.S. dollar. Uh, for this conversion, all these conversions, uh, $400 a, a month. I've rented uh, five different condominiums since I've been here, about five years. Anything from, I've, I've had, I think, three, I have had uh, three studios, relatively small, 22 square meters, one one-bedroom, this is actually a one-bedroom picture, at uh, 42 square meters, and my present uh, studio, which is made into a one bedroom at 40 square meters. My average electric uh, has gone down actually even though I'm in a, a, a condo that's quite a bit bigger almost twice the size as my last one my electric has gone down. It is 2,291 pesos a month or 46 US dollars and it's gone down because instead of one of these uh, less efficient window units I have a split type unit and I also, instead of the large, older refrigerator I had, as much as I liked that huge, large refrigerator, it was older, less efficient, and I now have a uh, more efficient, newer refrigerator. Uh, so that made a big difference. Your electric will probably be two or three times more than mine. I have adapted. I'm comfortable at uh, about 80, 83 degrees uh, Fahrenheit as long as the humidity is down. And uh, that's what, anywhere, you know, 30 degrees or so. Actually, you know, 28, 27 degrees centigrade is okay with me. The internet in my condo is uh, fiber optic, uh, and it's I can buy as much as I want, as fast as speed as I want. I'm paying for 24 megabytes per second, and I'm getting that uh, steadily up and down. Uh, they just uh, bumped me up to 50 for the rest of the month to try to get me to switch over to a higher speed. And I am getting that speed, uh, but they also offer more, 100 and more than that, I think, through PLDT. Globe is the other uh, big internet cable company in town. What you often find is that one company has the exclusive for a building, so keep that in mind. If you're in one building, you want to go rent someplace else, and you have that contract with you for two or three years, uh, that company may not have access to the new building that you're moving into. I've been going through about six five-gallon jugs of water, and you don't want to drink the water out of the tap most places. A few people have told me they do in their areas, but uh, you would want to check that for sure. Anyway, uh, each five-gallon jug cost me 40 pesos, less than a dollar. And uh, I've been eat, going, doing a lot of cooking at home since uh, none of the restaurants are open, open, and that's affected my food costs as well, which I'll go over here in a minute. But anyway, about 340 or seven U.S. dollars. Here's the daily breakdown of my cost at my condo: the rent, the electric, the internet, and the water uh, comes down to 24,330. Pesos uh, divided by 30 days equals 811 pesos a day. Uh, divide 2,000 or 24,330 by uh, 50, you get $486 for the month. Uh, divide by 30, you get $16 a day. I thought about trying to break this down into uh, several different currencies, but there just isn't enough room on the screen, so. Uh, many of you know how to do the conversion factor, so I'll just leave it up to you, those of you from different countries. My food costs dropped uh, quite a bit this month. They usually come in at uh, right around 300 U.S. dollars or 15,000 pesos. And uh, there again, because of the cir uh, current circumstances, uh, 
eating out much, much less, uh, buying in the markets much, much more. Uh, so anyway, the cost, 11,857 pesos, or about 237 uh, dollars, U.S. dollars. That's about $8 a day that's costing me for groceries. I usually, I like to have my cupboards kind of full, so I had a, a pretty good stock of stuff before the uh, uh, quarantine-type issues came in, but I did stock up on some additional things, uh, but not that many, I guess. And uh, so anyway, it, it went down substantially. My cell phone load, I spend about 200 pesos a month, uh, sometimes 300, don't use it that much. Uh, you get a text for one peso, uh, so anyway, about four U.S. dollars there. I also have a Google Fi account and phone that costs me about uh, 1,350 pesos a month, or about 27 U.S. dollars. And that gives me a U.S. phone number, and I've done a, a video about that. Transportation uh, averages 823 pesos per month. This is a four-month average. There again, we're in a very strange time. Uh, because transportation has been shut down for two months, so it's a pretty pretty odd time. Uh, but that would normally be taxis, uh, occasionally a hobble hobble, a motorbike taxi. I've used a number of times, a rare occasion, a tricycle, and occasionally a, a jeepney is about eight pesos for a ride. My average trip, say just to Ayala, is about 100 pesos, about uh, two U.S. dollars. If I want to go to a more distant mall, J Mall over in Mandawi or Immigration, uh, about 200, 250, five dollars uh, tops if there's a lot of traffic. I extend my tourist visa either every two months or occasionally every six months, and it averages about 30 U.S. dollars each time I do per month. So if I do it two months, that'd be 60 dollars. Uh, so, and then you, there's an ACR card involved that you have to pay for once a year also. And I uh, didn't include that. That'll be coming up when I extend my visa next time. My pharmacy costs, I guess, I think they're fairly low. I don't have any prescription medication that I'm on, fortunately. And all my pharmacy costs are over-the-counter type stuff. Uh, I was taking like some allergy, uh, loratadine, uh, different things for, for allergies. And I finally just quit taking them. They didn't seem to be working. I have found that almost all pill supplements, uh, things like Advil, are behind the counter. They're not sitting on a shelf where you can just take them and purchase them. You have to go up to the pharmacy and ask for it. And they don't come in a, a box or a bottle. They come in individually packed little things. So first time I went to the pharmacy, I, they asked me how many I wanted of something. I said, I want one. And they, they brought me one pill. I said, no, no, no. I want the whole, I want the whole bottle, the whole. Uh, you, and they said, you can't have them all. You can't have them all. You can only have 10 or whatever. If you have a favorite brand, a pill or whatever, for whatever reason, uh, I suggest you bring as much as you can along. Uh, my second trip over here, I brought uh, quite a bit, and I was wondering if I'd be questioned about it uh, in my uh, in my check baggage, and nobody ever said anything. But carry your prescriptions and that type of thing for proof that you have the uh, uh, authorization to have those pills. Entertainment expenses have been uh, quite low over the last four months. My cost per month, 869 pesos, about 70 U.S. dollars. And that usually involves uh, going out uh, for a beer with friends. Uh, they, have, they have theaters and movies in town. They have other events you can go to. Uh, but anyway, it, uh, it is quite low much lower than normal. Just depends on your lifestyle there again. There are a number of bars and entertainment places around town. Just depends on what you're looking for. Phil Health uh, costs, I think it's uh, about 17,000 pesos a year for foreigners. And uh, so that comes to 1,416 pesos per month and or about 28 US dollars. And that is a hospitalization plan. It, uh, 
uh, may cover anywhere from 20 to 40 percent of a hospitalization uh, from what I've heard. Stuff and clothes. Uh, stuff is in anything not included anyplace else. If you need a spatula, if you need a little pan, if you need a screw, a screwdriver, all those sort of things, and, and clothes uh, are pretty much set. We've uh, picked up all the items that we've needed uh, for the condo, so I haven't really spent any money that I know of uh, for those types of items. But there's always stuff that you need. You're in a store and Ah, I need that. I could use that type of thing. So should be part of your budget. I did not include the cost of girlfriends. I've done a couple other videos about that. I'll put a link at the end of this uh, video of one of those. I think it's called Girls, Friends, and Other Expenses. I did not include uh, charity. You know, you're, you're, it's difficult if you've got a heart uh, not to hand out a little money here and there, and I did not include those types of things. I've got uh, a few expenses back in the USA. Life insurance is one of them. A uh, couple other expenses. Did not include those here. I did make a trip to Malapasqua, and, and I did not include uh, those costs there. Um, I, I will do a little bit of a video about uh, traveling and trip costs. I usually budget about $100 a month for a trip someplace. It uh, doesn't work out that way, especially during these last couple of months uh, of the quarantine. Um, but my costs tend to average out about that much over the course of a year, about 100 a month, about fifth, uh, about uh, uh, about 5,000 pesos a month for a trip, even though it might be every other month that I take the trip. If I added correctly my total expenses uh, on the average for the last four months, 42752 per month, or 854 U.S. dollars approximately. There again, uh, under this quarantine, it's kind of a strange month. Uh, you usually spend more than that. I usually plan on a budget uh, at least 1000 1100 a month. And uh, in my opinion, it, it's... You know, there's always unexpected expenses. I don't, uh, I don't have costs in there for traveling back to the U.S. or other things like that. I did not include my uh, my trip costs of 100. That would add another 5,000 pesos. Uh, anyway, it gives you some idea, and I tried to, uh, rather than just the very basics of rent and food and electric, uh, I tried to include a lot more than that because your expenses here will add up. There's always expenses, unexpected. Uh, I did not have any dental or medical expenses this month. Next month I will if they open up the dentist. I will go to a dentist and uh, probably cost me a hundred or, or something. Usually a doctors, uh, if you go in for something, a consultation is usually anywhere from 300 pesos at the very least, six dollars up to, I've paid 800 pesos to one specialist eye, ear, nose, and throat, something like that, 800 pesos, uh, and uh, let's see, 16 U.S. dollars, I think. Anyway, uh, when you're planning trips, uh, you know, they usually cost more than what you plan for, so keep that in mind, and hope that helps you out. Safe travels to you all, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.